Welcome to the You're Not Invisible After 50 podcast. I'm Kiran Kumar, founder and host of You're Not Invisible After 50. Despite the title, you don't have to be over 50 to listen to this podcast. No matter whether you're 25, 45 or 65, we can all learn lessons from each other to help us build a better, more fulfilled life. Come listen to the inspiring stories of all the phenomenal women over 50 who are kicking ass and making an impact. They are not invisible. I'm not invisible and neither are you. So no matter what society says, life doesn't end at 50. In fact, it's just beginning. Welcome to the You're Not Invisible After 50 podcast. I'm Kiran and host of this podcast. We're all about showcasing phenomenal women over 50 who are kicking ass and making an impact. You'll get to hear all their inspiring stories while you don't have to be invisible after 50. So sit back and enjoy the wonderful life story from this week's guest. My guest today is Laurie Kesey. Welcome, Laurie. Hi, Karen. How are you? I'm absolutely fine. And how are you doing, my lovely? Well, we're doing just fine here. It's a little cold. I was in Florida um, last week or the week before. I can't even remember. The travel down there was was wild. Um, and I come back here and it's cold. Oh, so, no. <laughs> yes, yeah. It wasn't as cold as it was earlier, though. My goodness, it was zero. Zero. I live in the South, and that's unheard of. So anyway, hope everything is well in, in London. Well, it's Bristol, but it's it's dull, and it's grey, and it's typical <laughs> British weather, right? So, And it's just the end of January, and spring days are still a month away, I think. So, <laughs> yeah, and it's wet. So um, thank you for coming on. and. Thank- really glad you took up the invitation so let's get you to introduce yourself to our listeners in one line before we move into the body of this podcast my name is Lori Kesey as you've said and I am an author blogger I have reinvented myself that's, that's what we that's all what we do do don't we because I've reinvented myself as well so that's good we'll talk about that in a little while Is there anything else you want to say about yourself before we move on? I've always been a writer, but I have reinvented myself to write differently now. Mm -hmm. Um, I write stories about people who've overcome adversity Mm -hmm. and I've met all kinds of people. And in the process, I've learned quite a bit about how you have, how you deal with, with the, the fastballs that life throws you sometimes. And I've come to some truths, at least for me. And I'd like to share those with with your audience. I mean, I'm so looking forward to that. So let's move on. Um, So in this podcast, we cover your life story. We start with the past, obviously, because that gives people, the listeners, you know, an understanding of who you are, where you're coming from, et cetera, because we all carry that. The present, what you're doing currently, um, was there a trigger point at 50, if if there was or there wasn't, um, and then what the future looks like. So let's start at the beginning, wherever you want to start, um, the past. The past. I didn't have adversity in my past. You know, I was one of the lucky kids. You know, I had two parents. I had um, sisters and a brother whom I loved, awesome friends, lived in a little town in Maryland outside of Washington, D.C., and life was good. I mean, I I wasn't abused, nothing like that, unlike so many people I've met, you mm-hmm. know, since I started this blogging career. Um, but four years ago, my husband and I faced an un- unspeakable tragedy when our oldest son died in a tragic swimming accident. His death rattled me to the core. And that's when I started thinking, okay, what is the meaning of life? Mm -hmm. What is our purpose? You know, I'm a believer. I believe in God. Why would he take him? He was only 33 years old. And so that's what launched me into this reinvention. Seriously, Karen, I, I struggled with this. I mean, there were so many dark days. I mean, I remember, um, 
I think I had a, a nervous breakdown, to be honest with you. I mean, I woke up and I just couldn't function. And then I started, I went to a, um, a bereavement class and learned some very important things there. But that's when I started my journey. I started really thinking hard about the purpose of life, the meaning of life, all because I wanted to understand what happened to my son. Did he fulfill his purpose in life? And so I wrote a book, a novel, which I based on his, he's he's the muse. He's the muse be mm -hmm. behind the, the uh, protagonist, a character named TC. Some of us are very lucky. Well, some people are very lucky to have a very kind of easy childhood. Um, but life, as you said, throws curveballs at you. And your curveball was the death of your son, which is not any parent wishes upon themselves or their child. And, mm -hmm. you know, hearing your story, I can hear, feel the grief all still in your, because you do, because that was your child. Um, and I can totally understand what when you say that you know you couldn't function because that loss is so monumental but you know from all what we lose we learn something and you know you've got that moment in time you think oh god this is all over everything's changed everything's over now but then you realize that life isn't over and you have to move on and as you said Laurie you've had this is a new beginning this is a new redirection in your career um, do you want to carry on and say any more about anything of, of the of that past? Well, when I started writing this novel, it took a tremendous amount of time. I've always been a writer. You know, I was a journalist. I worked for NASA as a communication consultant. You know, I, I wrote all the time. Um, but then I realized I needed to do more. I, I've never been in the publishing industry. This is a whole new thing for me. And I realized, well, if, if you're going to write a novel, I mean, how many novels are, are published every year? Thousands. And you need to create a platform, um, a means, a way for people to discover you and, and, you know, like your writing and want to follow you. So that's when I started the blog. And it's, I call myself the accidental blogger because this wasn't something I had planned to do. Never. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I think, well, maybe I should do a podcast, but I, I, I'm just so busy and I admire folks like you who, who do these, do these podcasts. And for now, I, I'll just hold off on that um, because I'm pretty busy trying to get prepared for this book that's supposed to publish at the end of this year. And I have a lot of work to do, lots and lots. And, you know, writing the, the blog and then I send a, a monthly letter to um, those people who do follow me. So that's what I've been doing um lately and speaking trying to speak to others i i guess what i've discovered too is that you know when horrible things happen you know bad things happen to everyone mm -hmm. you know and i and i've discovered you know you really do have a choice you can you can become embittered or you can look for the purpose and then attempt to take that knowledge and extend it out to others and i think we, we women, we can we can relate to one another. We 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 talk intimately with one another. But a lot of women that they just need to know that they're not alone. And so that's that that's my mission these days. The other the other main theme I try to emphasize is that we're all created for a purpose. And sometimes these horrible things happen because you need to be redirected onto your proper path. And this tragedy, this this trauma could very well help someone else achieve his or her purpose. Um, and I think that's another thing. I mean, you know, something happens to me. I do this. It's all we're all intricately woven like like a tapestry. And it's it's just that's that's what I've discovered. It, it took a long time, though, Karen, a long time. But it's it's. It's easier now. Um, certainly, you know, we, my husband and I will sit and we'll just start crying. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we'll be thinking about our son and it's, it's hard, but I think I know where he is. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's another thing. I know where he is and he's okay. So. 
I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm so sorry for your loss. And I feel that, as you said, Laurie, that we learn so much. And I've also said on this podcast just now that we learn so much from our losses. And that, as you've said, it, you actually then step into a new path because you have the realization of how has this affected me? must be affecting other people and how can I be of service to somebody else and we're all of service because you're of service through your writing I'm of service through my podcast and hopefully much more but it's reaching out to those people who may feel alone because I know that I was alone for a a majority of my life and that was painful and now even though that was a painful experience you want to bring it or you want to make better use of that and and not, as you said, um, dwell on it or become bitter or embittered by it, et cetera. Um, so I think it's really important to kind of move on. It's a difficult thing to do. So no one can say it's easy to, you know, having faced adversity and then, you know, kind of bouncing back. It's not an easy bounce back. It takes time. No, and I, I love the your whole premise to your podcast. You know, women over 50 aren't alone. It's it's interesting. Um, we do have something to say. We do have life experiences. And it was so funny. A while ago, you know, a, a, a podcast producer contacted me. I don't know why he thought I was 35. I trust me, I don't understand that <laughs> one. Look at my hair. Yeah. And well, would you like to be on this podcast where you're debating with a man on relationships? He goes, we're dealing with 25 to 35 year olds. And I wrote back, I said, dude, I said, I'm 65 years old. Uh-huh. I'm not who you're after. Oh, but, but it's so funny. I mean, we're of an age. We've experienced so many things. We have wisdom. And it's a shame that younger people sometimes don't want to hear what we have to say. So I I think that's interesting because you could be of a certain age, like, you know, 65, 55, whatever age you're at, you could still have a young kind of spirit and soul and you could have still be energized by it. Um, And so it's not like, oh, okay, I'm I'm 50, uh, you know, or 60 or 65 or 70 and I'm old. Now, what is old? I'd like to know. Let's define old because yeah. old is what you think it's going to be. I mean, I, I, I'm i nearly 60, actually. And I just think, gosh, how did I get there? I was asking my daughter the other day, how did I get here? But I haven't <laughs> changed in my, the way I am in, in my thinking, because I still feel younger in my spirit. And, and could it be because you are following your purpose in life? And, and when you know you've reached, you've, you're there or you're almost there, there is an overwhelming peace. Mm-hmm. I, perhaps you experienced that too when you, when you started your enterprise. You know, it's like you're floundering around and you mentioned that you, you were alone. And then suddenly, wow, I'm really at peace. I'm okay with this. Mm-hmm. I mean, absolutely. And I think, you know, I mean, I say I'm alone. I, was, I mean, I have the greatest support of my children. And, you know, they are just the best thing since sliced bread. So even though I may not have had other people supporting me in the past, I had them and I just feel, and now I'm also at peace of the decisions I've made in my life so that I can stand alone and speak out and be the person I was always meant to be. And all of, all of my life, I was kind of stifled from that. You know, I was, I was um, rebutted and et cetera. And I just felt that now I feel now that I have a voice um, and, it's as loud as it's ever going to be now. And and when we were younger, we were perhaps, perhaps you were, I know I was, um, trying to achieve certain things in the corporate world um, with my children. Oh, they have to be doing this, this, and this. Very, we, with my children, well, we were from the outside of Washington, D.C. It's a very competitive environment there. And, and parents are pushing their kids and, and I'm feeling, uh oh, I'm not doing something right. And I get very worried about that. You know what? I don't care. I, I don't care if you'd like me. I hope you do. I like most people. In fact, I'm, I'm supposed to love everyone. Um, and I try to, but if, if, if you don't agree with me, that's okay. We can mm-hmm. agree to disagree and we can move on. That's Absolutely. really my attitude these days. 
Among with the other one that we all have a purpose. That is so, so critical. Following the death of your son, which I don't want to kind of spend too much time on because I can understand the pain and the grief. You said that you met a lot of families. You rediscovered a new path. Um, and I wouldn't say you come out of the grief because I know that what grief is about because grief, take you get back and go back into that grief. It's never, it's, it's forever with you in terms of a loss. So when you felt that you'd kind of regained your composure, let's put it that way, um, and you started to think about what was next in terms of what you're going to do because you've decided to venture out and do something different. On that path you met, as you said earlier, you met various people. Do you want to talk a little bit about you know meeting these individuals in your life that you know caused a stir in your soul? You know, I'm so glad you asked that. Um, As I said earlier, I I did not, I was not abused as a child, sexually, physically, mentally, I was not abused. But since I started this, I have met many, many, many women who were abused. Mm -hmm. And the effects are Mm -hmm. life-changing. I just, I'm writing, just finished a a blog about a woman. She's... mm, Gosh, she's in her 40s. She had she spent 22 years of her life in a severe cocaine and meth addiction. I mean, nothing, nothing could stop her from from abusing herself through with the drugs. She lost her four kids. She was beaten up. She was she was selling cocaine and meth in in CD hotels. She she ran she ran guns. You know, she she got beat up. She was pistol whipped. She was raped. I mean, I her story was so profound to me. Mm. But she did. She 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 finally stopped. And it was it was a faith. She had to realize I'm out of control and I'm turning this over because I've made a hash of my life. And it's it's a very, very uplifting story. Um, I met another lady um, in New Jersey and she was talking about her mystery box. You know, the the questions for which you have no answers. And so you, you put them in the mystery box thinking maybe I'll never answer them or be able to answer them. And she was able to find the purpose of her suffering she found the purpose and what a gift that is you know she realized that that she had relied solely on herself um for for some of the decisions she made and sometimes we don't make very good decisions and we need to use the higher power you know regardless of what you there are so many different faiths out there but many of them you know they're the you rely on a higher power and i and i do think that that's important um that that you stop thinking about what will i do no what what think think much broader there's there's a reason for this and you need to discover this and there are answers absolutely and you know i feel that by meeting a variety of people and listening to their stories, you know, first you learn so much about them and which is obvious, but you also learn a lot about yourself and how you react and what you could do to assist or help or support in any way, even if it's a word, you know, and I think people need that because people go through all sorts of crap in their lives (laughs) and, you know, and, it's how can I, again, it's coming back to that thing about how can I be of service? And by that person, for example, the person that you heard or have been, or the people that you've been listening to or been or they've been telling your, their stories to you, they know that there's an outlet there and that you're listening to them. And that's important in itself, as is like this podcast, you know, the things that we talk about, because everyone has a past, has a story has faced some sort of adversity, has changed their course of life. Um, But it's about, okay, how do you come out of that? And how can we help you move forward? And that's where the the tips comes in at the end. But we'll talk about those in a a while. I think another thing that that, um, when you reach the age of 50, perhaps, you know, I've, I've started a new career, but I also started giving back more. I started volunteering. 
And I think that is really important because you learn so much. I started volunteering for an organization that that attempts to redeem mothers, mothers who have lost their children due to typically it's because of drug abuse. Mm -hmm. And boy, oh boy, my eyes were opened. And these women blessed me in ways that I've never been blessed before. No, there was true empathy in my heart. I mean, most again, most of these women had been abused Mm -hmm. and I doggone it that's i wish it's 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 like people can shame people say oh look at what they're doing but think about what how they got there it's we have to be more empathetic that's that's all there is to it and we also have to forgive one another as well um so i just i just those are core uh, themes for me. I, I just, I don't want to be the old Lori I used to be when I was raising my kids, being psycho mom, you know, being worried about, you know, society's expectations and that sort of thing. I think we're all kind of caught up in that when we were younger, right? We're caught up in the kind of corporate life, in in our uh, expectations of us through our, um, our societies that we kind of move in, by the people around us. And then at the age of 50, some miraculous thing happens, which you know, wasn't spoken about in the past, right? People of 50 plus just went quiet. And now this is the whole thing about this podcast and the work that you're doing. And then and a lot of work that everybody else is doing who are of, of that age is that there's more to us. There's We have a voice. We can't, we have so much, as you said, Laurie, um, wisdom and knowledge and experience. And we need to utilize that and give back to the world because you know once we're gone we're gone that knowledge is gone that voice is gone that you know and it's just wasted resource why not utilize it whilst you can right you know i've uh over the uh this past weekend or the weekend before um a graphic designer I had used for years and years and years when I was doing my freelance work working for NASA etc and all the other clients and he <clears throat> stopped by to visit. He had never been here. I live in Tennessee. He was um, had driven or had gone up to Virginia to get his daughter, take her down to the University of Tennessee, and he spent the night. And he's 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 struggling now. Um, he lost his job outside of the, in the Washington D.C. area, and he thinks it's because of his age. He's not old. I mean, he's in his late fifties, but employers will look up, oh, oh my goodness, you're 50, you're, you're, you're going to require this much salary, blah, 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 and you, your skills aren't what we want. And he's also needs to rediscover himself because maybe the season of his art direction, the things that he used to do in marketing, maybe those days are past and he is supposed to be on a different course. I, I mentioned it, but I think he was still, he's still struggling with, oh my goodness, my entire identity is gone. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just truly hope that he, he finds something else where his, his amazing skills will be put to better use his ability to, he's so funny. Oh my gosh. I I said, dude, you need to be a stand up comic because (laughs) I mean, the guy is so funny. He's just clever. And I, I truly hope that, and that goes for all everyone of this age group, you know, if someone said they don't want you, okay, okay, getting back to, all right, finding your purpose. Absolutely. You're right, Laurie, because that's exactly what you and I have done, you know, and so many others who are, you know, we're meeting through the course of our work now. And it's amazing that people have got um, that kind of foresight to actually make a change and have the courage and the strength of character. You know, it's not like, oh, okay, I'm this age and I can't do anything else. I mean, I do have moments like that myself, but I kind of have to rethink, like, no, this is my purpose. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm really excited about. But also this, what we are doing can be of service. It can motivate other people to do something different. And who knows what you or I or other people, what that work will lead into and how we can assist more of more people in the same kind of age range and, you know, beyond. You said a very uh, key word there. You said courage. Yeah. You need courage because mm-hmm. if you're, oh, well, I never did it that way. Well, you know what? It's time to do it another way. Mm-hmm. And, and 
And you'll know when you've, again, I said this before, but you will know that you've made the right decision when you are enveloped in a, in a, in a piece, you know, the, the tension in your neck is gone and you're just, I, I don't like the word happy. Happy is buying a new pair of shoes. Happy mm-hmm. is getting your hair cut. Happy is buying a new outfit. It's joy that I'm after. I don't have to be happy, but I have to live my life joyfully so that it spreads it out farther and wider. That is and my goal. As you, and as you said, that word, that's the word that was in my head, which is really uncanny, right? That was the word in my head because it's not happiness. It's joy. You have joy. to find the joy. You have to be joyful and joyous. And that's the, when you wake up with that, Everything seems so much better, doesn't it? That's what you jump out of bed and you're ready to go. It's mm-hmm. not, I remember all those years, especially in my early career, I really hated my job. And, you know, now I'm up at 5 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. I, I do my little routine, I'm ready to go. But I remember back then, it's like hit the alarm, snooze, snooze, snooze. Mm-hmm. I did not want to go to work. Yeah. I, needed my job. And here I spent all these years, the golden handcuffs, I need to make money. Um, they had great benefits, the whole bit, but it was a, it was a soul sapping job and I needed to get rid of it. I needed to move on. But sometimes we, we allow those, again, the golden handcuffs to keep us uh, shackled to something we should not be doing. Absolutely. And once you get out, you'll know it because you feel good. So, the pat, the present. So currently, can you, you're doing the the, the blog. Is there mm-hmm. anything else that you're doing currently that, and, and the volunteering? Yes. Um, I spend, you know what, sometimes I think, Karen, that I work harder now than I did when <laughs> I, <laughs> when I so-called work for a living. I'm very, very busy. Um, with my blog, it's, I interview people, I do research. So it takes a lot of time. And I just started, um, I just started, I just became a syndicated columnist with, with the price of business digital network. And I am repurposing some of the things I've written in the past for that, because it takes a tremendous amount of time. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, I'm, I'm toying with the idea of, of possibly, um, doing a podcast. I know for social media, I need to be doing more reels. That whole thing. It's like, oh my gosh, it's just really, I guess also I I feel like I look foolish. You know, I, I, I don't feel comfortable uh, video videoing myself. It's almost like, oh my goodness, the, the, the selfie generation, the I'm look preening and, and whatever before a camera. And I don't feel comfortable with that, but you know what? when you ask what else are you doing, I I need to um, embrace some of these challenges. And for me, that is a challenge. And and becoming a speaker, going to conferences, speaking before others. That's, I mean, I'd rather be dead than (laughs) than do that kind of thing, but I have to. And, you know, that's a growing experience too. So there's a whole lot of work I need to do on, you know, expanding my boundaries, um, feeling more confident, uh, just going ahead and going for it because it's really, you know, if I, if I want people to read my message in the blog, as well as the novel, well, then people are going to have to learn about me and they can't learn about me. If I'm, if I'm hiding, you know, behind my computer and just doing my little scribbling, uh, you can't, that you're not going to get anywhere. Somebody somewhere will like you. So <laughs> you just go, <laughs> I, I like you. Go on social media and I like you. I'll follow you. <laughs> so you've got one person already. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And even before we started chatting, I had computer trouble. Now, back in the day, I would have flipped out seriously. Oh, but, you know, I guess it, it'll work out. It will work out. Be patient. That's another thing I need to work on. Patience. I oh, am. You're my friend there because I have very little patience. <laughs> My, my mine is um oh I want something done like today now this moment <laughs> yes you're you're the get her done kind of a gal yes I so, am. yes I my my family uh thinks it's funny they just you know they they don't get things done I'll say oh, I'll just take care of it you know that's but you know what you shouldn't do that 
I mean, you're denying someone else um, an opportunity to to prove themselves or um, um, or not <laughs> good about themselves or something like that. So, yeah, I have a lot of work to do, frankly. Yeah, yeah, you you kind of brought that out <laughs> in this podcast. But oh, it's fabulous. All- <laughs> fabulous um so what about the future is that it's more or less linked with the present isn't it really of what you're doing and that's carrying on you know what you're absolutely and I've been thinking a lot about that um do I have another book in me maybe I know I would like to write more more short stories that is that is a medium I really 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 enjoy um the certainly the blog post will continue um but I, I'll be honest with you, I'm scared to death you know, when this book is ready to go and just learning everything I need to do with launching a book, it's, it's quite involved. And I've, and I've learned so much in the past year and a half since I started this, but I, that is going to be dominating my activities uh, come the fall and Mm -hmm. until the the winter months um, provide, I haven't gotten the edits back from my publisher's editor. <laughs> so they're, ex- they're expected soon. So I could be, um, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Um, g- getting the book absolutely ready for publication. Mm-hmm. Nothing. I do not want something to go out that I am not um, pleased with. Mm-hmm. My name is on it. So I have to be a perfectionist there. So that, but that's that's what the future holds for me, at least in the short term. In the long ter- term, I, I really would like to get in to the car or my husband's trunk with our dog and just take off, mm-hmm. just hit the road. I've always wanted to do that. Um, just travel across the country and just g- g- certainly avoid the highways, go the small roads, go into these little towns and and meet people that you know what I really want to do that I and it's, wouldn't that be an interesting podcast as well yes wouldn't it though oh wouldn't that be great oh here meet this person that would be <laughs> and the, the more colorful the better we must have colorful people you know the just the people who are completely authentic to themselves and that you you mentioned being authentic and that is another thing when when you hit our age Mm-hmm. Yeah, you must be authentic because once again, you need to find joy and you were made in a certain way. And, and certainly we we can improve ourselves. Obviously, we need to change our attitude sometimes, but being authentic is so important. You feel good in your skin. Well, I think there's no other better, there's no better way to be because at the end of the day, it gets very tiring to be anything else, right? So you might as well just be who you are and and be done with it. (laughs) Right, exactly. Okay. Um, What about, and what was the trigger at 50? Was there a trigger at 50? No, I was still embroiled, I was still embroiled in in making a decent living as a, a communication consultant. And we were... We were getting ready. Well, let's see. Now you're making me do math. Oh boy, not my strong suit. Yeah, I was still living in the DC area and it came over me. It was time to move on. So we did, we we picked up and we moved 500, more than 500 miles away where I knew absolutely no one. It was like literally jumping off a cliff and it was the best decision we ever made. Um, just moving to this area. I love it here. I absolutely love it here. The the, the traffic is, it's getting more crowded because people are moving into Tennessee, but it's beautiful. The people are amazing. Mm -hmm. They're polite. Uh, Young men will see you coming and they're immediately opening doors and they're calling you ma'am. And I love that. I love, they show respect. And so I, we, that was, that was what, that was a big change when I, shortly after I had turned 50. Interesting. And I think sometimes you just have to do that because I moved from um, Bedfordshire to Bristol um, only two years ago, a year and a half ago, which was again, when I was 56, seven. So, you know, (laughs) a bit late in the day, but yeah, I just kind of went, yeah, let's try something new. And now, as you said, um, you know, I want to go traveling. So that'd be interesting. That'd be another stage. Okay, let's move on to um, what the five tips you would give to someone 
who are who are under 50? The first one would be don't take anything for granted. Number two, listen to your inner voice, your intuition, whatever you call it. Gut feelings protect from bad decisions. Number mm -hmm. three, don't be afraid to follow a different path. In fact, don't be afraid of anything. Fear immobilizes. Four, forgive. Five, never forget you have a purpose in life. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And how about the three tips to anyone who's over 50? If you have a bucket list, work it. If you don't, think about your childhood dreams and pursue them. Number two, don't fear the unknown. Number three, don't let toxic or abusive relationships of the past embitter you. Forgive and move on. Very similar to the first one. Yes, absolutely. Laurie, it's been so wonderful listening to you and talking to you. It's just been awesome. Absolutely awesome. I've learned so much and I'm sure I would want to continue this dialogue for like forever now with you. <laughs> and hopefully we can collaborate on something. Well, you are my friend and I thank you for, for inviting me on. This was a great discu discussion and I love meeting new people and I've met you. Yeah, absolutely. And vice versa. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so all I can say, Laurie, is thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll wish you the best and let's keep in touch. Okay, no problem. Thank you for listening to the You Are Not Invisible After 50 podcast. If you want to hear more from some amazing women over 50 who are kicking ass and making an impact, then don't forget to subscribe to our podcast available on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Remember to rate, comment and share with other fabulous women. And together, let's change the narrative that you don't have to be invisible, no matter how old you are. Check out our other services on www.you'renotinvisibleafter50.com and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn and TikTok. And always remember that life doesn't have to end at 50. In fact, it's just the beginning.